Hi everybody, my name is Dimas. Today I'm going to review the book Devil's Creek by Todd Kiesling. I hope I'm saying his name right. Now, this is going to be my first video review. So please forgive me if everything in this video seems a bit rough because I have yet to master the technicality of video making. So bear with me and um, let's get on with the review. Now, Devil's Creek is a horror novel, or more specifically, a small town cosmic horror novel involving death cults and childhood trauma and religious extremism and many, many other horrible, horrible things that I cannot mention here because I don't want to spoil the fun. Now, fun horror is the kind of horror stories that I gravitate towards because in fun horror, there's a sense of thrill, there's a sense of excitement, and there's a sense of humor even, so that the story doesn't have to be tense all the time. For example, movies like Scream and The Conjuring series and The Final Destination series are the type of horror movies that I find to be fun, you know, fun horror movies. Whereas for books, I would consider Rats by James Herbert, or The Troop by Nick Cutter, or Final Girls by Riley Sager as some of the examples that I consider as fun horror books. But of course, it is all subjective. Now, Devil's Creek is a very, very disturbing story of how a group of characters are trying to survive the horrible, horrible figure and circumstances that has haunted them from when they were little. Right from the very beginning, in the opening scene, the book hooked me with thrilling and shocking and bloody scene. The novel opens with a group of grandparents who were trying to stop their grandchildren from being sacrificed in a ritual. Now, this ritual is ran by a cult, and this cult is led by this person named Jacob Masters. Now, Jacob Masters is some sort of a priest that believe that his God needs to be fed with innocent blood. So that's why he was trying to sacrifice this six kids to his God. Now, this group of grandparents were led by this character named Jeannie Tremley. Jeannie Tremley herself was trying to save her own grandson named Jack Tremley from being killed. This opening scene I really love so much because it is intense and it reminded me a little bit of this movie the lord of illusions and the other thing that i like about this opening scene is that it introduced us to all of the main characters right from the beginning from the main characters and the town that they all live in stafford kentucky and the book also lets us know from the very beginning what type of horror what kind of horror it has in store and from that thrilling suspenseful brutal opening scene, we jump 30 years and we meet with the adult Jack Tremley. He is the kid who was saved in the opening scene from being sacrificed in the ritual. Now, Jack is now living in New York and he's a successful painter and he has left Stafford, his hometown. But a mysterious incident involving his grandma brought him back to his hometown. Once he set foot in Stafford, he met with the rest of the kids who were saved 30 years ago from the ritual. Now, those kids are all now adults, and they are basically the outcasts of the town. There's a total of six of them, and the people in town called them the Stafford Six. And Jack is part of the Stafford Six. All of these characters in the Stafford Six, including Jack himself, is haunted by nightmares and the memory of this priest, Jacob Masters. They believe he's dead in the opening scene. In the opening scene, Jacob was defeated. But of course, this being a horror story, the dead doesn't stay dead very long. So to keep things short, Jacob, the priest, finds a way to return to the town. And he, he's trying to finish what he started. He tried to claim the Stafford Six and, and sacrifice them to his god. Now, I'm not going to tell you what happens in the book. I will just tell you that the book goes 
to disturbing places. Like I said earlier, it talks about childhood trauma and it talks about abuse, child abuse, and it talks about religious extremism and it's quite violent and it's it has plenty of gross out scenes, gross out moments. So consider this as a trigger warning for any one of you who cannot stomach, you know, things like that. There's mutilation, self-harm, and you know, many, many horrible, horrible things. Now, I don't mind violence and gross out scenes in horror stories because I understand the one of the objectives of horror stories is to scare you. However, I there's a time when I was reading the book when to me it becomes a bit too much as those scenes that I've mentioned come one after the other, especially the gross out scene. It comes repeatedly, especially in the third act. There are scenes involving worms and black sludge coming out of people's mouth and people's eyes and ears. And they were played out repeatedly to the point that it, I think it does not give uh, the intended impact anymore. However, I must say that the writer has successfully made me care about the fate of all of the main characters. But there are more than two main characters and they are all fantastic. I mean, their personalities are well-defined. We immediately understand what their hopes and fears and ambitions are, and it made me sympathize with them instantly. So when shit really hits the fan during the hellishly, hellishly chaotic third act, I root for them to survive. I must say though, that the climax of this story near the end really drew me back in to the story because it morphs into something touching, into something more human, because it moves away from all of the bombastic, sensational, over-the-top chaos, and it becomes really personal to certain characters. It gives certain characters emotional closure. It gives redemption to the characters. So the climax to the ending is wonderful. All in all, despite the repetitive scares in the third act and the brutal, brutal subject matter, which sometimes went too far, I would still give this book a four out of five stars because I realize while this book is not what I consider as fun horror books, it has some things that I find can be quite lacking in other horror books, which is great characters. And most importantly, strangely, heart, especially during the climax and all the way to the ending. So it really does end on a wonderful note, which made me love it at the end of the day. So yeah, that's my review on the book Devil's Creek by Todd Kiesling. I definitely would read more from him because I think he's a very good writer who can write brutal, brutal horror scenes as well as heartfelt scenes that give his characters and his story depth. So if any one of you have read the book, please let me know what you think of it and share your opinions or comments down below. I know the book has gotten great, awesome reviews on Goodreads and Amazon. That is what made me curious to check out the book in the first place. And I was not disappointed. It's a, it's a brutal read. So that's all from me. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you again in the next book review video.